I make a pretty big deal about how awesome our merch is. And in fairness, it is, lttstore.com. But even I can't help but feel a little bit of small PP energy when I see other YouTuber merch that is this freaking cool. In front of me are four gaming computers and a special black box that allows me to effortlessly, seamlessly, and nearly instantly switch between them with the exact same monitor, keyboard, and mouse setup. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Here, watch, I'll do it again. Boop. That is so freaking cool. And of course, it would come courtesy of Wendell from Level 1 Techs. I just have a few questions, Wendell. Hey. What exactly is this thing? Why did you create it? And what makes it so flippin' special? I mean, what is the difference between YouTuber merch and just an actual tech product at this point? I don't know. Maybe I can get the answer from our sponsor. Next to go, their new Aurora Pro 4K projector features three HDMI 2.1 inputs, a maximum screen size of 150 inches, and support for Dolby Vision. Next to go learn more at the link down below. Everything about this product is just Delightfully Wendell, from the plain white packing box with the simple, not even glossy adhesive backed laser printed label on it to the unimaginative yet amply descriptive name. I mean, what is it if not 8K DisplayPort 1.4 KVM switch with USB 3.2 Gen 1? That's what it is, right? And this is everything it does, which when you dig into it is not padded. That is a freaking lot. But first, what exactly is a KVM switch? Goodness gracious, this thing is huge. Oh, I see. We've got the Chungus one. All right, well included is a little manual, a basic power adapter with, oh, okay, yeah, it's got the modular thing on it, but you only get a North American one. Sorry, everyone else. Oh, and that's pretty much it, which is fine because this this is what you need. For the uninitiated, what you guys are looking at here is a KVM or keyboard video mouse, which, okay, it's not much of a keyboard and it certainly isn't a mouse or a video, is actually a switcher for those three devices. And the idea here is that if you have multiple computers, say for example, your gaming machine is a PC and your work machine is a Mac or a Linux box, you have the ability to switch your peripherals and the device that your monitor is accepting an input from all with the press of a button, or actually with a good KVM, and this is a good KVM, with a hotkey that you press on your keyboard. Of course, none of that is what makes this special. KVMs in their various forms have existed basically since the dawns of keyboards, mice, and video devices. What's cool about this one is how much video it can handle. This is a DisplayPort 1.4 KVM. And this one doesn't just switch which machine or machines are taking input from your mouse and keyboard and outputting to your monitor. It actually can handle up to two monitors across four separate systems. Not only that, friends, but each of these ports is DisplayPort 1.4, which means this thing is capable of up to 8K 60 FPS with chroma subsampling or 4K 120 Hertz 444. And it's packed with all kinds of other gaming centric features like support for HDR, support for free sync. That's right, variable refresh rate, meaning it might not have RGB or flashy packaging or even an impressive sounding name, but this is no ordinary piece of office equipment. This is the gaming KVM. I gotta say, this thing reminds me more of an AV receiver than anything else. Here is where each PC can input up to two monitors. Here's the USB uplink. Here's the audio uplink for each one. And then things get a little bit confusing because if you want to plug in a peripheral, well, okay, your human interface devices, so your keyboards and mice, they all go here. Your headphones that you actually want to use go here. Okay. These are upstream. And then if you have a USB device that you wanna plug in all right, to these PCs, that high-speed port is right there. And then you've also got another human interface device one and another high-speed one on the front. Super convenient. 
The buttons on the front are to switch which computer you want, but of course there's an easier way to do that, which I showed you guys already. And there's more. There's a version that supports USB 3 5 gig, but also one that supports USB 3 10 gig, meaning you could have a storage device connected through your KVM and transfer files at up to 10 gigabit per second from you know this computer to that one. Not that you would ever do that with your KVM because let's face it, you know level one techs and you can afford one of these. So you probably just have a 10 gig network already. Uh, which brings us to kind of an uncomfortable point. It's $700 for the version I have in front of me that isn't even the top of the line, and it doesn't even come with cables because while Wendell does stock cables on the level one tech store, he figured, hey, look, if you can get them affordably somewhere else and he doesn't have to QC them, so much the better. So with that pricing in mind, you're probably wondering, how could anybody justify this? Well, why don't we see it in action and I'll show you. I really hope you guys don't like cable management because this is about to get really ugly really fast. Come on around back here with me. Boom, you are now PC4. Something to be aware of is that while it's super convenient to have the KVM up close to the user and the computer is far away from the user, you're just gonna wanna make sure that you use extremely high quality cables in a case like that because you're going to have to account for all the loss from the cable itself as well as the loss from the interface here. I talked to Wendell about this when I was actually using one of these to switch between a LAN PC in the LAN room and my own PC. And he was like, yeah, it's just really important to use high quality cables in a nutshell. Oh, uh oh. How did look, I manage look, look, to get look, look, these so one? hopelessly mixed up? This one's still not plugged in. What just happened? You see this? this yeah, one's... yeah, which one? Oh, that's the first That's what I was trying to tell you. I hope these are all good cables. I hope so too. I guess we'll, oh, this one is infinite cables, so this one's gonna work great. Can you shill for them slightly harder, you think? Um, well that one's not, so it's probably not gonna work because it's not from infinite cables. Probably gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it just depends which monitor, because one of them's 1440p, and that one's 4K. This is awful, and we don't even have any audio devices plugged in yet. Do you have a suggestion for a better way to do it? Yes, everything should be wireless Bluetooth. <laughs> oh, wonderful. This is great. The weight of the cables <laughs> pulling the feet up. You need some lead weights in there, Wendell. That's my free consultation for you, for your uh, product design. Or you could use the upcoming LTT cable management things. Oh yeah, actually, that's true. That's a better shill. Sorry, Wendell. Do you want any other things? Um, like an Xbox controller? Or some high-speed storage, Ooh, as you yeah, mentioned Xbox before? Yeah, Xbox controller would be cool. How about this, high-speed storage? High-speed storage, yeah. Oh my goodness, this is. Look, I got, I got, um, I got now. some more things for you here. Here's a mic. Why not, right? Uh, I mean, I guess so. Uh, here's a hub you can plug in there. Why are you, why are you determined to push this to the limit? Why not? I mean, I guess so. I got a capture card if you want. That what, could... Jake? I like how you're using the Xbox controller as your HID device. <laughs> Is it not a human interface device? Well, you won't be able to use the hotkeys. Oh no, there's all. There are four HID ports. Oh really? Yeah. Oh cool. No, this thing is freaking awesome. Oh sick. Yeah. Did you mention you can rack mount it? That would kind of solve these problems. No, I hadn't mentioned that yet. It's oh. cheap. I think it's like 20 bucks for the rack mount kit. Yeah. Okay. Hey, look at that. Plug and freaking play G-Sync compatible display connected. You don't understand how remarkable it is that that just worked. The pleb way to switch to another computer, and you can see the light goes from green to green plus red, is to press the button there. And there it is, look, Satechi D drive. And the USB other drive. USB drive. Oh man, I never even thought about like sharing a webcam, for example. Yeah, where's the thing. webcam? I thought we got a webcam. Yeah, let's get a webcam. We've got the mic. The webcam is actually like a uniquely kind of awesome use case. Cause that's really difficult to do through, I mean, realistically any kind of hub. I always recommend plugging a webcam directly into a USB 3 port. And the other thing is that it's really uncommon for these KVM switches to have USB 3 ports at all. Usually it's keyboard, video, mouse, not keyboard, video, mouse, webcam, microphone, USB drive. I mean, then it would be a, KVM um. Now, a point of clarification is that Wendell doesn't actually recommend using it for mass storage devices, probably because you're not gonna be on top of it and you're not gonna safely remove them, <laughs> not because it can't do it. So your mileage may vary with that, but he does support a lot of other 
enthusiast specific use cases. Like it's been tested with high-end RGB keyboards from the likes of Corsair, Cougar, brands that don't start with C, and it's validated for HDCP pass-through. So, I mean, we can test that real quick. Uh, what's a, uh, what's an HDCP protected something? I mean, Netflix, Netflix is. Netflix, I think. Do we have network running to any of these? Nope. And one of them probably has Wi-Fi, I imagine. One of them definitely oh. has Wi-Fi. Oh God. Oh, oh Jesus. everything is going bad. All right. You know what we can test is HDR. Hello. Hey. Well, that immediately worked. Freaking awesome. Is there like HDCP test website, you know? Yeah, like, is that a thing? Yeah, that's what I'm checking. Oh. Is there a simple tool to determine if my HDCP is working? Oh wow, this looks like a wonderful app. Download Advisor. Bruh. Uh, How about no? Okay, the NVIDIA control panel can apparently do it. Also a fantastic app. Very recently updated. Definitely not fresh out of 2006. Yes, all good. So we weren't gonna be able to run into anything that was not gonna work because it's fine. Great. That was our problem. Good job, Wendell. Why is our webcam not working? Are you sure it's not working? I mean, it's like red and looks sad. Oh, you probably need this. Hey! Literal actual poser. Okay, fine, fine. I will take the, I'll take a picture. There, are you happy? <laughs> you gotta shave. Make okay. yourself look younger. I don't think it'll help. <laughs> Remember when Luke shaved? <laughs> True, but Luke's also younger than me. You know what really makes you look younger? Being younger. Linus is just going through his Obama phase. <laughs> that eight years when you just age 25 years. Wait, you haven't even like switched between computers that much. Oh, right, 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 right. Let's show the cool way to do it. Boop. What, really? That's so cool. Scroll, scroll, four. What else can you do? I am now using that computer. And what? look, there's my storage, which definitely oh, totally oh, works, oh. but definitely probably causes problems like Wendell said. See, this oh. is what, uh, you should always listen to Wendell. Just always listen to Wendell and then your life will be good. Oh, the webcam seems not happy. Uh, well, no, 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 it'll figure it out, it'll figure it out. Give it a sec. And once the drivers are no already way. on, I'll, yeah, of Look course, it, it immediately works. What? Freaking love it. And it's completely seamless with the keyboard and mouse because, oh, did I even mention this? Not all of his products are just KVMs. So he's got a wide, wide range of different devices, depending on how much you want to spend. You don't have to get the $700 Cadillac version. There's just dual PC ones like this, single monitor to PC. Uh, here's one that's single monitor to PC with a 10 gig uplink. That's why it's USB-C. And he even has one that doesn't support a display at all. Oh yeah. It just supports mouse roaming between the machines in hardware. <laughs> so we've done that before. In software. But in software, in hardware. Yeah, you do need a no fully latency. HID compatible mouse. So some fancy gaming mice might break it. Sure. But like a normie Dell mouse, so this one will probably work fine. Yep. That's kind of nuts. And the other really cool one is the USB power delivery one. Oh yeah. So it'll charge the connected devices if you want to switch between your laptop and your iPad yeah. and have mouse keyboard input for both of them. I mean, he even makes one with four monitor support. You can do four computer, four monitor, what? which is, that's like the $1,200 one. How big is it? it large. It's tall. <laughs> it's in charge. Yeah. Basically any setup you can imagine. I think that one is built to order because there's no photos of it. And it's just like, if you want this, please email Wendell at. <laughs> what? No internet. Yeah, this one's not plugged in. Oh, I just nice. I just switched computers again. You just didn't even notice me doing it because I was like, boom, 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 boom. Computer switch, let's go. Anyway, the one that I'm playing games on is this one. So this is the use case for this, right? If you've got a render or code compile running on something else, or maybe one of your machines is just a server that you have a GUI on for some reason oh. because you're weak like me and you just want to be able to check on it once in a while. I really want this because I have like my little router box I'm going to build and my NAS and I have them sitting side by side. I want to be able to switch between them. So let's just check all that switching around. I just want to see, is HDR still working? Can I enable it here? Enable HDR in my game. Right. Yes, that definitely worked. This is so cool. I mean, it's the kind of thing where realistically, if you don't need it, that's fine. You can just spend the rest of your life pretending that these things don't exist, mm -hmm. that KVM means kernel virtual machine. I mean, you're not wrong, but if you're a discerning multi-box user and you don't happen to have, um, the world's largest desk to hold all two of your monitors for every one of your four systems, 
This is an absolutely incredible solution and Level 1 Tax has a sick product portfolio that covers basically all the bases now and they're even working on DisplayPort 2.0 and Thunderbolt in the future. Thunderbolt KVM? I actually didn't even know he had that. Well, he was saying that the Intel Thunderbolt chipset is kind of a piece of crap and that it will be very difficult. <laughs> oh, okay, so maybe. Yeah. I guess my only question at this point is why did it take a YouTuber to create this product. I mean, there's literally hundreds of KVM switches on the market. Uh, uh, well, it's actually very simple. In the beginning, it was, this is the situation I have. I have a lot of computers and I want to switch between multiple sets of displays and computers easily. Why is this so hard? I mean, it, it turned out that there were actually a lot of good reasons why it was hard that I didn't understand. I had to do a lot of homework to understand USB and DisplayPort and new USB and other USB. Uh, look, I, I tried eight or nine different KVMs over the years and I couldn't find a single one that did everything well. So my first thought was to modify an existing product uh, and only build my uh, my own uh, matter of last resort because ain't nobody wants to do that. So for both USB and display switching, you really need purpose-built integrated circuits or ICs to do that. I'm not gonna fab my own ICs, obviously, and those are different chips. Companies like Texas Instruments and NXP make what are called reference designs for things like display switching. You know, the USB spec literally has a section in it to dynamically map USB devices between different host computers for a KVM type use case. So why don't we just implement that in the spec? Well, yeah, that's, that's actually what doesn't work if you exactly rigidly follow the spec. And it's actually the same dis same story when we're talking about DisplayPort. DisplayPort switching, uh, it's a little problematic. That's why the design philosophy of the KVM has shifted from trying to emulate a monitor and, you know, do all that stuff to just plumbing different connections to the displays. The KVM tries to be invisible now and operate purely as a switcher, as a matter of design philosophy. One of the biggest hurdles with fast and reliable display switching in a KVM type context is actually copyright? Copyright, yeah, it's actually a huge annoying mess. Copyright expansion maximalists require encryption, HDCP, between your GPU and your display because you're a filthy pirate and you might steal those ones and zeros. Those interests in copyright have uh, inserted themselves into display standards committees to the extent that this kind of a KVM type use case is not even considered. And even given a KVM that works, you're gonna have to juggle multiple sets of encryption keys between different computers, and often that's not done well. It is an awful lot of unnecessary human suffering that ultimately doesn't do anything to stop media piracy. When I started this, I never would have guessed that so many problems with this stem from this HDCP mechanism. Fortunately, I was able to learn a lot about that and a lot how about, uh, you know, USB works or it doesn't work and all of the edge cases with USB. And I built an amazing relationship with an ACE team in Taiwan that helped me understand, that taught me a lot and we worked together on stuff. So the hardware design of the KVM, it, it, it's already modular. There's multiple boards inside this KVM and each board only does one thing. It's a separation of concerns. <laughs> we in software like that. So if you want three DisplayPort, you've got three DisplayPort boards plus a USB board in the bottom. And if I have to go off script and do my own thing, I can do my own thing. And so as I put in the work and learned everything way back in the DisplayPort 1.2 days, testing a whole bunch of devices, I learned that there was a lot that was really to do with, you know, the specific uh, functionality around the USB spec. I mean, a lot of the USB devices themselves don't follow spec. Remember how I mentioned USB has a thing in it for dynamically mapping devices to host computers? Well, virtually no USB peripheral maker even tests for that. Uh, take, for example, the Logitech unifying receiver. This thing is common as rocks and sticks. And it actually supports an 8-byte USB protocol and a 20-byte USB protocol. The 20-byte USB protocol is better in every way. You can do cooler stuff, but for old legacy compatibility, you need that 8-byte protocol. So if you've got a KVM and you're switching between a host that's doing 8-byte and another host that's doing 20-byte, you're going to have to handle that, and it's complicated. So how do you handle that? Well, very carefully, it turns out. So through my collaboration and software, because it turns out I'm, I'm decent at that, uh, we can do something a little bit more pragmatic 
rather than actually follow spec to the letter. Buggy Logitech wireless receivers and universal audio video codec, that means driverless. Uh, even Corsair K65 keyboards and whatever kind of crazy USB peripherals you've got can work. I actually have two different kinds of USB ports on the KVM. The USB 3 ports are hard switch and the, the uh, USB HID ports are more of that dynamic device mapping thing. Uh, sometimes we can't fix it in the KVM. Th this behind me here, that's the Samsung G9 Neo. It loves to not work. It works reasonably okay with the KVM we sell only because I found bugs in Samsung's DisplayPort firmware and I opened a ticket with Samsung and I relentlessly harassed them for about three months, yeah, three months to get a new firmware. And finally they sent me one, 1008 and newer, which now largely works with the KVM. The main reason that I've become known for KVMs is that I'm willing to chase things down like that, to try to understand, to try to go down a rabbit hole of pain and human suffering and try to figure out someone else's bugs, bugs that if we strictly stick to the spec, they would never get fixed. I still read every single trouble ticket that comes in and internalize it up here. That's the secret of the success, someone that's willing to put all that in their brain. Buying a KVM for me means that I'm gonna put the money back into more and better products and to try to understand the problems and fix it. And through that, I found some amazing connections our customers include game development companies, Fortune 500s, <laughs> nuclear labs, uh, even hospitals for radiology displays. Hospitals need KVMs too. Yeah, it turns out that if you've got a fancy radiology display, you don't want to buy a bunch of those. You want to just switch between devices and hey, we can do it. And all of that is why I love these things so darn much. Wendell is one of the only other people that I've ever met whose product creation process basically goes, yeah, this exists, but it's not quite perfect enough for me, and cost be damned, I really do think that I could make it a little bit better. The only question this all raises then is, why is it so darn expensive? Look, this level of debugging and engineering, it takes a lot of time and effort from a surprisingly large team. Even just buying quality 10 gigabit USB chipsets that actually work is a huge pain. Not to mention, we are, compared to basically every other KVM vendor, operating at a very tiny scale. These things are almost handcrafted, which means the costs are way higher. Even with higher costs, customer expectations are sometimes impossible to meet. You'd be surprised how many people expect to uh, plug in a single Thunderbolt 4 cable to their gaming laptop and be able to run three 4K 144 hertz monitors on the other side of that. I'm sorry, the math is just not on your side. 40 gigabit Thunderbolt 4 is pitiful in a world with 144 hertz monitors, it can barely do one, maybe not even. Uh, and that's why even pedestrian USB-C docks from the likes of Dell and HP, like what you get with a business class machine, they now have dual USB-C connections. And that's why. Uh, the only way I can deal with that in the KVM is by having two or three separate connections. So, I could do something like this. This is an upcoming model. This one does 120 watt USB-C power delivery, but also has two extra monitor inputs that are full fat DisplayPort 1.4. As far as I know, this is a globally unique product, but even with all of that effort, you know, it's not perfect. There are gonna be edge cases. There's gonna be stuff that I run into, but hey, if you're willing to work with me and spend some money, I'll do what I can to try to figure it out or connect the dots or Put it together, because that's just how we roll at level one. It all, I mean, it leads to KVM adjacent products. Things like the EDID feeder, or this is the 8K version of that that we've been working on for a while. Uh, uh, LTT reached out unwittingly because they needed a, an eight-way HDMI thing. And it's like, well, uh, it's gonna take some customization in order to be able to do that, but we can do that. And this was used at LTX because it's not exactly a KVM, it's KVM adjacent, but that's just, because of the cool stuff. I love solving problems. Okay, fair enough. But I can think of one thing you don't have an answer for, Mr. Oh, Wendell Smarty Pants. I know, I know. It's our sponsor, right? Corsair. Building PCs is really fun, but it's easy to finish up and realize you've somehow created a spaghetti-inspired cable art piece. I mean, your mom would be super proud, but you might want to also consider Corsair's IQ Link ecosystem. It helps reduce clutter inside your PC with one standardized cable connecting everything. You can even chain devices together using that same simple connector, all leading to a single IQ Link system hub that can be magnetically attached to your PC case. Each of the hub's two ports can handle up to seven connected devices, which helps reduce cabling complexity. And with a range of products in the ecosystem like fans, coolers, and power supplies, building a fully connected PC is a breeze. 
Oh, and of course, you can customize the RGB lighting of all your Corsair devices with their IQ software. Check out Corsair's IQ-linked smart ecosystem at the link, pun intended, down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might enjoy seeing a potential use case for these things, where I have a central computer in one place and then fiber optic cabling running to different kind of stations where I can sit and use it throughout my house. Is that really a cost saving measure by the time you buy one of these and a bunch of fiber optic whatever? I would say if you wanted to buy a bunch of baller monitors, this could actually save me money. Yeah, 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 but mostly it's just really cool and awesome.